everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and we're going to be doing another random ass anime review, and this time it's going to be on one called Aura Battler Dunbound, but not the Dunbound from uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. So this anime is considered as a mecha and fantasy setting, so it's pretty much just like Magical Knight Ray Earth, but more Gundam, but less Magical Girl stuff. And speaking of Gundam, the show was actually created by the one and only Yoshiyuki Tamano, who is also the creator of the Gundam series. So with that said, now let's get to the main story. So the main character of our story here is Sho. So Sho lives in Japan, and he's doing the thing that he really loves doing, and that's motocross racing, because, you know, motocross racing is all the rage. But one day when he was riding around his motorcycle at night, he ends up uh, going into a time path where he ends up getting teleported to another world. So the world he ends up teleporting to is called Bystone Wells. And the regular area that he comes from is considered as uh, Upper Earth according to these people. But he's not the only one that got teleported here, there's a group of other people that got teleported as well. So the one responsible for this is someone named Drake who is the overlord of the kingdom of Bystone Wells. So what he does with these people that are teleported into this world is that he ends up wanting to train them to becoming knights and wanting them to pilot something called Aura Battlers. And as you can tell, the Aura Battlers are indeed the mechs of this show. So, show, So, show. <laughs> okay, anyways. Sho ends up becoming a full-fledged pilot and he ends up doing a couple missions and battles for them. But then Sho realizes that Drake is kind of a dickhole, so then he ends up wanting to join the Resistance team, which is run by someone named Neil. So Neil is a Resistance leader because Drake killed his parents and he wants revenge, and he's the only one that has his uh, family name, Gaivon. But there is other members of the Resistance group that are important, such as Marvel. Or she was originally from Texas, but she ended up getting uh, teleported as well, but this happened many years ago. And interesting enough, Marvel and the main character Sho end up first meeting each other as enemies, which does make things pretty interesting. And one other character I can't forget is Cham, who happens to be a fairy companion that follows Sho around and also likes to beat him up whenever he says something stupid. But there is a lot of other characters I did not get a chance to talk about, like Keen, who happens to be the daughter of the noble house but ends up wanting to uh, prove to her father that she is worthy. And then there's Burn Bannings, who happens to be the main rival of a uh, show within this show. Show within this show, oh my god. And the last somewhat main character that I'll mention here is uh, Remul, who is the daughter of Drake. Now even though she is the princess of this show, she actually uh, does not like her father much and ends up wanting to help out uh, Neil's uh, resistance group. And one last thing I will mention about the story, and don't worry, this isn't going to be a major spoiler here, is that uh, the reason why that some of these people are getting brought from the modern times to this world of Bystone Wells happens to be through a, uh, a fairy thing. I forget what it's called, so keep in mind, I haven't watched the show in like a couple weeks, I'm just like recording this the way after. So keep that in mind, but anyways, they're a special type of uh, fairy female where pretty much they have the special power to bend time and space, and Drake is using their power for that where he wants to kidnap people from the modern times and ends up wanting to pretty much take over the entire world of Bystone Wells. And as you can imagine, abusing that kind of power can have some odd effects, but anyways, that sums up everything you need to know about the show. So now let's get moving on and start talking about the animation, and the animation here is pretty damn good. So first thing I have to mention here is that I really love the setting of this show with like the dark fantasy mixed in with some like mechanical future stuff, I really love that shit. And all the backgrounds look really nice and all the character designs also look really nice, in fact I find that a lot of the character designs kinda remind me of something from Fantasy Star, which is always awesome. And the design of the Aura Battlers is pretty badass looking, it kind of reminds me of like a mix between Kamen Rider and uh, Giver, the bio boost armor. But yeah, that is probably my favorite looking part of the show is that the mech designs in them are pretty awesome. And as you would imagine, the action in this show is pretty great for 1983. So yeah, I really can't think of any complaints I could make about the, uh, the visuals or the animation themselves. I think everything just looks really nice, especially for 1983 standards. And as for the show's music, it's also pretty great as well. So all the songs fit the show really well, where it sounds very fantasy-like. 
But at the same time, it also does sound very similar to a lot of songs in uh, the Gundam series, which does make sense, since, like I said, it's made by the same person. Hell, if you just listen to the soundtrack to it, you would know right off the bat that it's like, yeah, this is some Gundam stuff. So you really can't go too much wrong with that, and of course, I really do like the opening intro of the theme, it's really catchy, and I love it a lot. And the ending theme is pretty great stuff too. So now let's get into the show's voice acting, and all I gotta say here is that it's actually not as bad as I was thinking it was going to be, but it's definitely not great. It's very inconsistent, if I can say that. So show, <laughs> never gonna get tired of that, is voiced by Jay Hickman, and he's actually a pretty good voice actor, and as for this role, I think he suited it pretty well, but there is a couple times that are a little bit inconsistent, but for the most part, it is probably the best one in this show. And then Marvel is being played by Christine Outen, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think she did an okay job, not great, but definitely not terrible. I know there's a few people that would probably complain that, you know, she doesn't sound like she's from Texas because that's where her character is from, but here's the thing though, if they made this character have like a typical like southern accent, I think that probably would have made the show uh, very fucking goofy considering that this is a very serious show, so... I don't know about that, but either way, it's definitely not bad, but it could have been a way worse. And then Cham is being voiced by Kira Vincent Davis, and I think she suited this role pretty well. So not much to say there, and then as for Neil, he is voiced by Vic Mignogna. Now he's a voice actor that I am very familiar with, and I actually do like a lot of roles that he does, but as for this one, yeah, unfortunately this one was really lacking a lot. Although it does progressively get better, but even at that, it's still very far from being one of his best. And then Remuel is being played by Hilary Haig, and she actually did do an okay job at this one. Definitely a lot better than I was expecting. And then Burn Bannings is voiced by John Swazzy, and I think he did do a pretty good job at this one. And finally I'll mention is our main villain, uh, Drake, is voiced by Phil Ross, and I think he did do an okay job. Not great, but uh, definitely not bad. So yeah, pretty much, the voice acting here is very inconsistent, and usually is a mix of, uh, you know, good and not so good, not terrible, but uh, definitely not the worst thing I ever heard. So yeah, I don't know what it is, but it always seems like that whenever something that is Gundam or Gundam related that gets dubbed, the dub is always really weird. But in any case, that's just my opinion on the English voice acting, if you don't like it, of course there's always the Japanese one, which you really can't go wrong with since, you know, I can't really say if it's good or bad, but anyways. So, with my overall thoughts on this one, is that if I were to rate it, I think I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. So yep, I really enjoyed this one, highly entertaining. For not only did I really like the action scenes, I also really liked the characters and their interactions with each other. Also, the whole concept was pretty cool and very different for the time. Of course, maybe in this day and age, it's nothing too crazy, but I just like the way that they told it, though, and that's really what I think what's important here. Because it's not exactly what the story is, it's how you tell the story. So with that said, if you really like a lot of the Gundam series and you've never seen this one, I can highly recommend it. And since it's from the same creator, some things in the show might seem pretty different, but yet familiar to you if you are familiar with the Gundam series and the way how they work. But only that there's no space battles, instead it's just like battles in the sky within a fantasy setting with monsters and like castles and knights and all that kind of badass shit. And like I said about my anime review of uh, Magical Knight Ray Earth, I really love that kind of shit, because I never really thought something like that even existed as a show, but nah, it did, and it actually came out 10 years before it was born. How crazy is that? So anyways, with that being said, Aura Battler Dunbon is a pretty awesome ass show that I can highly recommend, especially for the mecha fans and the Gundam fans in general. Now, before I end it here, one quick thing I do want to mention is that there is a OVA series that is a sequel to this that came out, and that happens to be The Tale of Neo Bystone Wells. I have yet to see this one, but it is one I definitely do want to check out because, well, I really did dig this show quite a lot, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it whenever I get there. But in the meantime, well, just have to get back to just do what I normally do. Yeah.